Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, what is the perfect caliber for concealed carry slash self-defense? Hmm. It's a good question. Now, a lot of people would probably say 9mm. I mean, typically you'd get a you know, few hundred pounds, foot-pounds of energy per round. Maybe a little less or a little more, depending on what you have. Um, you have capacity, you know, varying quite a bit, depending on the size of the uh, the handgun you have. So, I mean, that's an option. But, you know, you can do better. You can probably do a lot better than that because, you know, 300 and something foot-pounds of energy, nothing to sneeze at, mind you. But, I mean, there are better calibers to, to have out there. Wouldn't you say? I mean, nothing wrong with this canic, but this probably you could probably do better. You can do better. As a matter of fact, you know what would be even better to defend yourself? That's right, forty-four Magnum. A nice, uh, nice forty-four Magnum. Uh, maybe even in a nice Ruger uh, Blackhawk or Super Blackhawk, I should say. 44 Magnum, that might get you about maybe 700 or so foot-pounds. You put some uh, buffalo bores out of that uh, seven and, I believe, seven and a half inch barrel, they're going to be zipping. Of course, you only have six rounds in there, whereas you might have substantially more in the 9mm, but, I mean, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, you know, maybe you can get like 10 or 12 or 15 rounds in your uh, your 9mm. That's true. But, you know, they might only be zipping along at like 375 foot-pounds. Whereas these might be like seven or 800. Hmm. What to do? So, it seems like there's really no perfect caliber. Plus, the other thing is, you may be able to shoot 9mm just fine. 45, excuse me, 44 Magnum? Maybe not as, uh, not as well. Personally, uh, if I had to make a shot, you know, at let's say 20 yards, I think I'm probably going to be more uh, more accurate with a 9mm, right? You know, if someone says, you know, I'll give you $1,000 if you can hit that target at 20 yards, you can use any gun you want, I'm going to use the 9mm over the 44. And if I can use absolutely anything, I'd probably use a uh, nice 22 pistol with uh, sights because I guess some people might not want to admit this, but sometimes certain calibers might be better for certain people. I know some people would like to say they're fantastic shooting everything. I'm not one of those people. I don't think I'm recoil sensitive or anything. I just don't feel like I'm quite as effective with uh, with certain calibers. You know, good enough, but not necessarily good. So what do you do now? You got this big clunky guy who's really powerful, only has six rounds. Then you got the nine millimeter that doesn't really have, uh, that has, you know, decent capacity but isn't quite as powerful. Hmm. There's another option. Ooh. Yeah, that's what you think it is. That's a Beretta 21A in the mighty 25 ACP. Now, you probably think I am out of my mind because... We all know that 25 ACPs don't hurt anyone, right? You, if, if someone gets shot with them, they just kind of just kind of flick them away like that, right? Because they're just kind of like flies. It, it's no big deal. It does nothing to people. <sighs> we hear that kind of thing a lot. But the point of this isn't that 25 ACP is the best or 9mm is the best or 44 is the best because none of them are. None of them are perfect. There isn't a perfect caliber because every single one has trade-offs. This one right here, 44. Okay, somebody tries to rob you or comes in your house and you use this. You're probably going to get a lot of overpenetration. Now, yeah, granted, it's going to do the job. I give you that all, all day. But, like I said, really bad overpenetration. And, um, like I said, are you as capable with the 44 Magnum as, as other rounds? Plus, it's only six rounds. You get the 9mm, well, maybe your handgun holds. 10 or 15 rounds, that's great. 9 millimeter, it's effective. 25 ACP, uh, I think it might only have about 100 or so uh, foot-pounds of energy. 
I'd have to check up on that. But, I mean, you know, so you're figuring that uh, just like the 44 Magnum is probably twi twice the foot-pounds as 9mm, uh, the 9mm is probably two and a half to three times the foot-pounds of the 25 ACP. Now, in certain circumstances, uh, that would matter. I always have people say, well, what happens if you have this really, really super violent guy who's all hopped up on drugs and he's really, really huge and just totally consumed? Well, yeah, probably the 44 is going to be the only thing that's going to make a difference in that situation. I agree. Um, if you have, uh, you know, a horde of zombies coming after you, the 9mm with, with all the capacity might be better. But here's the thing, and uh, we're pretty lucky that I, I'm pretty sure most of us are never going to be the victim of a violent crime. And that's a really good thing. And uh, I think if we are the, the victim of a violent crime, um, you know, there might be a chance that it might not be necessary to brandish a firearm at all, which is a good thing. So when you think about how, un, you know, how unlikely, especially like this, I'm, I'm saying unlikely for me, I live in a pretty, pretty quiet neighborhood. Um, you know, sometimes like I'm in some of the not so nice areas uh, when need be. But, uh, you know, if you're anything like me, you try to avoid putting yourself in, in bad situations and in bad places. And when you happen to be in those places, you tend to be a little more aware of things. Like just today alone, uh, my wife and I unfortunately had to go to a downtown area to uh, go to a store. We had to go to this particular store. And, um, you know, it's kind of like an old style downtown and it has like main streets, but then it has some small side streets and then some small side streets almost look like alleys. Well, you stay out of those, you know, you stay out of those little, those little side streets. You kind of say, stay on the main streets and you look around, you see somebody coming, you know, you keep looking behind you, see somebody coming around, kind of keep an eye and be aware that that person's there. So things like that minimize it. So, I mean, if you, if you avoid as much as possible, difficult situations, you're not going to really, it's a lot less likely you'll be in a bad situation. And like I said, there are other, other times when if the situation pops up, brandishing a firearm may not be necessary. Now, if it is necessary and brandishing a firearm is required, is the person who's threatening your, your um, safety and life are they really going to care <clears throat> how big the bore diameter is on your on your pistol? Are they going to say, oh, crap, you got a forty four Magnum, Ruger Super Blackhawk. Wow. And they're going to turn around and run away? Yeah, they might run away because I don't think they're going to know that's a forty four Magnum, you know, Super Blackhawk or anything. But uh, they're going to run away because you just pulled a gun on them. Possibly run away anyway. Um, if you pull a nine millimeter if and they are predisposed to running away they're still going to run away and you know what i would argue that even if you pull this thing out this diminutive little 25 acp just the fact that you you've brandished a gun lets them know that you know what I, I'm, I'm getting away and the other thing is uh shot placement i can shoot that little 25 pretty damn well <clears throat> shot placement's more important i think than uh than uh, really bullet power or capacity. So I actually don't think it's that bad a, a decision. Now, I don't carry the 25 ACP, to be honest with you, but uh, I think I've said on the in the past, I actually carry 32s. Uh, I don't like 380s. I've, I've gone on about that. Not that I have a problem with the caliber. I have a problem with the guns they put them in. Um, if you showed me, uh, you know, a something that was a little more substantial than your typical 380 that was made out of steel. I think I'd probably like that because it would have a more substantial feel. I'd rather have the extra five or six ounces, have it be made of steel, have a substantial feel, and not feel like it's going to jump out of my hand when I shoot. That's why I tend to go with the 32s. Uh, I have the kel P32. It's a pretty good gun, believe it or not. I know kel has some issues, but it's a pretty good gun. And uh, I have a Beretta Tomcat that's in 32 that I also like quite a bit. Um, and that one's, that's a pretty substantial gun. And there's really very, very little recoil. And while it's not as powerful as 380, I think it'll do the job. And I really don't think anyone's, if I was in a life or death situation, that the uh, the criminal is going to say, <laughs> you only have a 32, I kill you. 
I don't think that's going to happen. So basically, uh, I think the I think having anything at all is way better than having something. Having no, excuse me, having anything at all is way better than having nothing. And um, I kind of think that you have with getting larger handguns and more powerful calibers. I think there's kind of like diminishing returns. Like I think that just having a gun, a firearm, is probably like ninety percent of it right there. And then having the extra capacity is a little bit more. Having a more powerful round is a little more. But I think really the big thing is having a firearm. Which also leads me to program compliance. I don't like carrying full-size firearms. I hate carrying full-size firearms. Uh, now, I know some of that can be mitigated by changing your wardrobe around and uh, and buying you know really good duty belts, good holsters, and all that other stuff. But it, to me, I, I just... Not really a, a huge fan of carrying full-size firearms. Closest I get to a full-size firearm would be a Glock 27 that I have with, um, with a uh, uh, a nine millimeter barrel in it, and sometimes I'll put like seven, like a you know higher uh, capacity magazine in with an X grip, uh, and I do that on occasion. But even lately, I haven't been doing that. I've just been picking up the 32s, and as you might see from one of my older videos, uh, I recently bought a. Uh, an NAA Guardian uh, in 32 ACP. I haven't gotten a chance to try that one out yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, that one is a, uh, I believe, a, an aluminum and steel uh, 32, so that should be pretty cool. But um, the big thing to me is, like I said, carry a firearm. Practice drawing that firearm. Um, really be used to the controls on it. Like, uh, you know, for example, like, like with something, with something like this, uh, this is a little, this is a little odd. I mean, it has, it has like the tip up barrel. And by the way, again, this is totally clear, but this one has the, uh, the tip up barrel, you know, and get used to holding it, draw it out of your, draw it out of your pistol, uh, use your holster, uh, get used to the trigger pull and all the, the little uh, details of it. And I think that's really like the big thing. I think this is a, I gotta tell you, this is a fine, um, choice now again you might say well it's only got seven rounds yeah that's true but uh if you hear the um the talk on uh i've seen in a, a bunch of videos and articles they say usually it only uh, uh run-ins with criminals usually only involve three to four shots so again you're probably not going to have a run-in with a criminal and if you do on average and your gun happens to be drawn and then it happens to be used, I mean, you're talking probably like, you know, like 0.00001%, and it happens to be used, you're probably only going to need three to four shots or less. Now, there is a chance you might need five or six or seven, but again, with every round that's expended, it makes it less likely that you're going to have to go up that high mathematically. So, yeah, it's possible. Again, you might have a pack of zombies attack you, and you're going to need, uh, you know, 38 rounds of, I don't know, 50 AE, but, you know, not very likely. So basically, uh, take this with you. There is no perfect caliber. If Tactical Tommy tells you that you need to carry 15 rounds of 10 millimeter, say, that's cool, but it's not really a necessity. Um, like I said, I went I went to my kind of lousy high crime downtown area today. I had a Karambit. And I had my 32 caliber Caltech with seven rounds, and I felt fine, you know. I feel like if something popped up, I could take care of it. So just a, just a few thoughts I wanted to share with you, because uh, all the talk on you have to have a larger caliber and stuff, I, I kind of feel good about 32, to be honest with you. And uh, the only thing I don't like about 32 is it's a little pricier compared to 9mm, but, you know, I deal with it. It's... You know, it is what it is, as they say. So if you are still here with me, um, I'm sorry to hear you don't have anything better to do. Uh, you're in my thoughts. But please uh, subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And uh, hit the like button because I like seeing the likes because it makes me think that, hey, there are some other strange people out there who think like I do. It warms my heart. Have a good one, guys.